Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Guillotine, and today I'm facing off against my friend, my clanmate, Suakja. This is a Korean League match. The grouping is single A. There are four groupings, single A, double A, triple A, and last, major league. Each week works like a mini season, and at the end of the week, the highest ranked player in each grouping moves up to the next group, and the lowest rank moves down to the lower. Each match is a best of three, and for this season, the beginning map for game one is on Matunui, and the loser would choose the following map. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into game one. Between myself and Suakja. My screen recorder failed me during the live playthrough, so we're going to just jump straight into the replay. This map has three starting positions. Uh, Suakja is down at the bottom left, I'm at the bottom right, and the third would be the top middle. On this map, I still like to open up with the Scout Gas Barracks that I mentioned in the following video, but I like to place my barracks a little bit lower down right by this on-ramp right here because I want to see exactly if and when he scouts me, which he's coming in right here. And also sometimes players like to camp out in that lower level. And if, if that happens and you can't get out of your original, your base, you might as well call GG now. My worker made it to his base exactly when his made it to mine, so I was a little preoccupied, but I did scout the electric tower, the barracks, and that he was building spearmen. And you can see now that he's going for another gas and a secondary barracks, and he's sending out an owl. I'm sending out a bat. I like to scout with bats for my second check. They cost less gas than a conventional owl, and they can also attack, so if I get to that expansion, as he's laying it down, I can often kill the worker, slow him down. As you can see here, his tower kind of picks him off, but I was able to see that he hasn't started his second base yet. So I am ahead in the base count. With, with this deck, I always want to be ahead in the base count, especially if I'm not rushing. Um, it really only works if you can get four bases and just continue to expand, have a lot of barracks and a lot of resources. On this map, players often race to occupy the starting position that was vacant in the beginning of the game. But when I do that, I find myself just running back and forth a lot. And mathematically, the resources in the center are a lot more valuable than the bases up top, even though the ones up top are going to be easier to defend. This map is all about control, and if you can control the center, you're more than likely going to get away with the win. One trick I like to do is to take a sneak bomber and go send him to the middle where that lookout tower is and just burrow him underground. He'll stay undetected unless your opponent sends an owl out and wastes that 50 gas just to kill a sneak bomber and sometimes the difference between winning and losing is forcing your opponent to spend that extra 50 gas. Now that my third base is up, I've got the center locked down with that sneak bomber. I'm gonna scout the top, see if he's not there, which he isn't. I put down an electric shock tower. He had an owl up there, he sees it. He repositions to just kind of keep some eyes on me. At this point, I feel confident and expanding to the top. We haven't seen much action. You can see he's building a whole bunch of troops. But if he wants to play a macro game, I'm going to just keep expanding, sucking up all the resources. He's starting to move out here. I spot it. I'm going to hit him with a bat bomb. I'm going to pause it here because that wasn't the best trade. I had noticed that he didn't have a tower in the back of his only expansion. And by this time, his natural is getting close to being mined out. Those bats were originally supposed to sneak around the back and kill all of those workers, but I saw this massive army full of units that I don't really want to fight head on and decided that I would go ahead and detonate those bats and try to kill some tanks and ninjas. He gets the better of me early in this engagement, largely due to the inefficient trade of those bats and tank plus blizzard is real bad for my squishy units. At this point, I know that I'm ahead in the base count, five to two, I just stay calm, hit Chrono, start cranking out way more troops, and trust that eventually Swakja is going to run out of money. He's invested a lot of gas in those cryo mages, so I know the likelihood of tanks coming back out is slim, so I can invest heavily back into pups and sneaky boys. I spot him realizing that he can't win the fight head on. He's gonna try to counter the top. I cut him off, clean it up with my dogs, and then it seems like he's invested his last bit of finances into some iron pants, which wasn't the worst choice, but they're about to have a rude awakening as they walk right into two towers, 
my bats, my sneaky boys are gonna finish it up. My economy is eight times higher than his and I'm sitting at max supply. I hit Swift one more time, come on down with these bats and Bodoons, clean up his final tank, and that's it. GG. Swakja, Kamsabnira. Thank you, Swakja. Good game, my friend. And that about sums it up. Thanks so much for watching. I plan on uploading Clash of Legions content pretty regularly in hopes to just get this game in front of more people's eyes. I think it's a really great game and not that many people know about it, especially the old school RTS fans that have just been itching for something new or those that just can't afford a PC like myself. So please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, whatever. It all helps spreading the word and I'll catch y'all next time. Later. Lastly, my kid wanted to have a sound bite, so here's a word from our sponsors. Mashed potatoes.